All right, guys. Hopefully, you guys can see uh, the problems that are up on the board. We are going. Sorry, I'm walking away from you. We are going to go through these problems. Okay, this is the uh, Hardy Weinberg more problem sheet that you guys had uh, to complete the other day. There's only four questions on here. It's fairly simple and straightforward. Uh, I haven't done these yet, so I'm going to be kind of figuring these out right along with you. Um, because I haven't done, I mean, granted, I'm sure that I did them last year, but I haven't done them for a long time. Um, remember, the goal to all these problems is to find P or Q. And if you don't know what P or Q are, you need to, first off, more than anything else, you need to figure out what these terms are. P is the dominant allele. Q is the recessive allele. Uh, putting that into the equation, um, I don't know. I don't think this will go. No, it won't. Full stop. Um, putting that in the equation, this is P plus Q, or P squared, excuse me, plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. Okay. So that's, I, I'm sorry, that looks kind of, let me erase that. Let me, let me draw it nicer. Uh, P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. Okay. Now, if you know that this is the dominant allele, this is the recessive allele, then this, P squared, is the homozygous dominant genotype. 2PQ is the heterozygous genotype. And Q squared is the homozygous recessive genotype. You have to be able to do that first. Okay. If you are struggling with this, it's probably because you don't know these. And if you don't know what homozygous dominant is, that is, if you're using B for an example, that's capital B, capital B. That's homozygous dominant. Homozygous recessive is lowercase b, lowercase b. Uh, heterozygous would be capital B, lowercase b. You need to understand those terms, guys. If you don't get what each one of those variables are, and you don't know what those terms are, then you will not understand these problems. They'll just be too much for you. Okay? You have to have a working prior knowledge of all of this stuff. Now, once you have that down, you can go on to the question. It says the delta 32 a, or excuse me, the delta 32 mutation, a recessive gene. Okay, so it tells you that it's recessive. So already I know it's either going to be Q or Q squared. Gives human humans protection from HIV. The allele frequency. Okay, it said the magic words there. Allele frequency in a town of Sweden is 20%. So it's talking about a recessive gene and it says allele frequency. Allele frequency should automatically trigger something in your mind and you should say, okay, are they talking about something from here or from here? If they use the term allele frequency, they're talking about this one. If you heard number of people in a population or if you heard the genotype, you would be looking at this one. But I didn't hear that. I heard allele frequency. So the allele frequency of this recessive gene, which one of these is recessive, P or Q? It's Q. So what it just gave you was Q equals 20% or 0 0.20. Now, how, why did I change it to 0.2? Because you're always going to be working with decimals here. And 20% is the same as 0.2. Okay? Again, a little bit of math knowledge. You should be able to do that. Now, if I know Q is 0.2, then what is P? Well, if P plus Q equals 1, I can say 0.2, or P plus 0.2 equals 1, subtract 0.2, subtract 0.2, and I get P equals 0.8. Okay, that's a simple math problem. So if Q equals 0.2, then P equals 0.8, and I can, as, again, I'm going to use the same words that Mr. Bozeman says, I can sit and smile to myself because I know what P and Q are, I can answer any question that they throw at me. I haven't even looked at the questions yet, but I know I can answer them. It says, what, per what percent of the population have two copies of the gene and are therefore immune to HIV? Okay, so this asks it in kind of an interesting way. It says, what percent of the population? So it said the word population. So I know I'm going to be looking at this guy right here. It didn't say a little frequency. Okay, so I'm going to be looking at one of these. What percent of the population have two copies of this recessive gene? What does it mean to have two copies of a recessive gene? That means to be homozygous recessive. Okay? So which one of these represents homozygous recessive? Q squared. That's the one that we're looking for right there. It says what percent of the population has two copies, homozygous recessive, 
of this gene, therefore, or a mutation of it. What is Q squared? Well, if I know that Q is 0.2, Q squared equals 0.2 squared. So Q squared equals whatever 0.2 times 0.2 is. I'm going to guess it's 0.4. Okay, let's, let's make sure of that. 0.2 times 0.2 equal. oh, I'm sorry, 0 0.04. Make sure that you always do the calculation because you're, you could be wrong if you just try to guess it. So this is my Q squared value, and it does say what percent of the population. Well, if I multiply that by 100 to change it to a percent, I'm going to get 4%. Okay, that's actually your answer because it did ask for the percent. So I do know Q squared is 0 0.04, and 4% of the population is going to be immune to HIV. Then it says what percent of the population are less susceptible to disease since they are heterozygous. So it asks what percent are heterozygous. Which one of these, it, did it say anything about allele frequency? No. So I don't need to worry about this. I need to worry about which one of these represents heterozygous. And you guys should know that there's only one up here, there's only one part of this equation that represents heterozygous, and that is the 2P cubed. Okay? So, how do I solve for this? I multiply 2 times P, which I know is 0.8, times Q, which I know is 0.2. So if I do that, if I multiply 2 times 0.8 times 0.2, I'm going to get 0.32, and, but it asks for a percent, so I need to change this to percent. How do I do that? I multiply it by 100. It's fairly easy. Okay. And I'm going to get 32%. So 32% are less susceptible to disease since they are heterozygous. Guys, I hope that you can see how valuable this is uh, for a uh, genealogist or for a, um, um, someone who's trying to study the, uh, the effect of genes on a particular thing. So that's your answer to these guys. I'm going to erase this. I'm going to keep my p squared plus 2pq uh, plus q squared equals 1 and the p plus q equals 1 because that's our equation. I'll even keep this up here if you want it, but I'm going to erase everything else, so I hope that you're ready for that. i got to find my eraser first. Just use, oh, here, we'll use this. Okay. All right, so that was the first two. Um, guys, I had a couple people say or email me or, or send me a little text or a little message or something on Google Classroom and say they're struggling with this. Okay, I have, that doesn't surprise me. Okay, this is not, I know this isn't easy for some of you guys, but if you follow along, if you practice these, if you write down what I'm writing down and you, and you try to understand it, I think it's going to help you. If you need to do a one-on-one -on -one, um, where we kind of walk through these like one step at a time, just like I'm doing now, but I do it with you. Sometimes that helps a lot. Tell me, tell me, and we will do this. You're going to get another worksheet today. Okay. It's going to have very similar problems on it. Um, but we're going to keep doing these. We're going to just keep the guys practice makes perfect. I know that you've heard that adage a hundred times, but it's so true. The more you do these, the easier they're going to become. I promise you. Okay, uh, it says 19% of the population show the dominant phenotype for nervousness around people. Okay, so this one's interesting. It's worded kind of differently. It says 19% of the population show the dominant phenotype. Okay, so how do you have the dominant phenotype? That means that 019 is showing this dominant phenotype. Now, which one of these, it's talking about the population. So is it talking, did it say allele frequency? No, it did not. Did not say allele frequency. It wants to know what the dominant allele frequency is, okay? But it didn't say that. It said allele frequency. So what is it telling us? It's telling us that either your P squared, okay, which is dominant, or homozygous dominant, so they're going to show the dominant phenotype, right? And 2PQ are going to show the dominant phenotype. Okay. Um, so I wonder, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Uh, I'm just along with you guys, like I said, I haven't done this one uh, before, or at least not, not for a year. I may have done it last year. 
So it says 19% of the population show the dominant phenotype for nervousness around people. All right. It doesn't say homozygous dominant here. It just says the phenotype, which is not the same thing as a genotype. These show genotypes. Phenotype is just what you, what you, um, um, what you display. So both p squared plus 2pq are going, oh, man, this one's tricky. I love it. This one is tricky. p squared plus 2pq are going to equal 0.19. Okay? Um, so because of that, you can replace, look at this. This is called math substitution, if you guys have ever done this before. You can replace this. Because p squared plus 2pq equals 0.19, I can take this 0.19 and I can substitute it in for p squared plus 2pq. Okay? So instead of 2p squared plus 2pq, this one's, this one's really hard. I would not give you this one on like a quiz or a test. But because of that, I can say that 0.19 plus q squared equals 1. Now, can I figure out what q squared is? Absolutely I can't. I need to get it by itself, so I'm going to subtract, this is 0 0.19, I'm going to subtract 0 0.19, okay? And if I do it to this side, this cancels. I also have to do it to this side, minus 0 0.19, okay? So I'm going to get 0.81, I believe. I'm going to take 1 minus 0.19, okay? Yeah, so I'm going to get Q squared, because these canceled out, equals 0 0.81. Look at that. Look at that. That's so cool. I love it. So it doesn't ask for Q squared, though. Q squared is the homozygous recessive genotype. It's not asking for the homozygous recessive genotype. It says, what's the dominant allele frequency? Well, that means that it's looking for P, not Q. But if I find Q, can I find P? Of course I can. So I need to find Q by itself. So to get that squared out of there, I have to take square root. And I'm going to get Q equals, what's the square root of 0.81? Well, I'm going to take square root of that. I'm going to get 0 0.9. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, that's a Q, sorry. Um, so Q equals 0 0.9, which means that P is going to equal 0 0.1. Why? Because if I take subtract 1 minus 0 0.9, I'm going to get 0 0.1, which is this one right here. Okay. So I have my P and my Q. It asks for the dominant allele frequency. So I'm going to put a box around this one because that answers that question. But because I have P and Q, I can sit and smile to myself because whatever number two asks, I'm going to be able to find no problem. It says, what is the recessive allele frequency? So it's asking for <laughs> the thing I just found. It's asking for the recessive allele frequency, which just so happens to be Q. There you go. We're done. All right. So that one turned out to be simpler than I thought once I figured out how to solve the problem, okay? Now, again, I'm not going to make you do a mathematical substitution where, uh, by the way, I hope you get that. I hope you understand why 0.19 is both P squared plus 2PQ because both the homozygous dominant and the heterozygous are going to show the recessive characteristic. They're going to show that recess or that, excuse me, that dominant characteristic. They're going to show that dominant phenotype. Phenotype is what manifests itself physically. So if this is like brown hair, for example, okay, I know it's nervousness around people, but let's say it's brown hair. People that have capital B, capital P are going to show brown hair, and people that have capital B, lowercase b, are going to also show brown hair. So that's why 0.19 can equal both P squared plus 2PQ. And then I just substitute it in, and I get this great problem. All right. If you guys were struggling with that one, I get it. That's a hard one. Um, listen, I am going to post another worksheet today. Okay, I want you guys to give it a tr give it a chance to try it. Um, I'm going to go through it again, just like I did with this one. Um, but the, I'm telling you, the more you guys do this, go back through. Okay, this one's posted; it's already up. Go back through and rework this. Make sure that you did it correctly. Okay, normally I would do this with everybody here, and I would you know have you guys work the problems. And make sure, work them again. It's okay. It's okay to do things more than once. Okay? The more you guys do this, the better it's going to be for you. All right. Hey, guys, stay safe. Stay healthy. Um, I'd love to say that I'd see you guys in a little bit, but I won't. Um, but we're going we're gonna to keep going through this, and we're going to try to get as much done as we can. Once we can get through this, guys, we got a little bit of notes on this chapter left. Um, but 
then we get to dissect as bad as I can. Okay. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.